Hi, welcome back. This is Rajshed with another video. In in last video, we look into uh, we started looking into details of status of library, and I only mentioned the common part as well as when a cell can act as a driver and a receiver. So let's start looking into a one cell as an example. So this is an AND2. This area is here, and it has two input pin A and B, and it has an output pin out. <clears throat> As I mentioned, the first part is just mentioning the capacitance of the, at the output, okay? So, purely think of that, this cell, when it's connected as input, and there is nothing connected on this side. So, its input, it presents each pin, each input pin here has a capacitance. So, this A has 0 0.012 capacitance. And what is the unit? Unit was back in the, the common part, which is peak of error. Similarly, pin B has an input capacitance of 0 0.012. That's an input. Direction is also mentioned. Okay. So we have the receiver model of the cell. So cell, it depends on in a particular timing path, let's say uh, we have this end and we have, let's do another end. Driving this. But another, this one is driving the B pin. Right. So signal, oops, signal comes from here and it connects to B and O. So in that case, the pin that will be considered because it's B, because B is connected to this one. So maybe it will have another one driving um, A. Uh, in that case, then we uh, will consider B. So it really depends upon what kind of timing arc or timing path you're considering. So that relevant pin will be considered. So in this case, this is a buffer example. So you have, so we have the input side model, right? You understand? The output side, okay, on output side, uh, this capacitance, direction, output, and the function of the output pin is what? A and B and the capacitance 0.024. So that is the capacitance. So for example, we have, uh, let's pick this one. So in MOS, um, again, basic and water example. Uh, and uh, if you don't know what I'm drawing, uh, follow CMOS lectures that I did. I explain all the MOSs. So A out. So this node here, so there's one capacitance when a metal is connected here, right? That metal will have a capacitance because it's, it's charging and discharging that one. But there's also capacitance at this node internally. Let's assume this is not connected anyway. There is also a capacitance, oops, not one, one that. So there's a capacitance here. That's a node of the drain and the source. Uh, those are diffusion areas and they have capacitance to ground. So that's really the capacitance that we are talking about here. Intrinsic or the um, the internal capacitance of the cells. So when you put this capacitance and you have another this capacitance, then tool needs to create an equivalent capacitance of these two if it wants to have single capacitance. So this is that capacitance. Now comes the important part. Now comes the driver part. Okay, the proper driver part. I know what it is, again, output pin, its function is this, capacitance is the same, mention again. I think this probably be redundant, I don't know. I asked Chad Jupiter to create that, maybe this, this is incorrect, uh, because it's already mentioned here. So when you come under output pin, okay, this is an important part now. You have timing information, and all this is a text. You can open the lib file in a um, text editor. So, Stanisa library is available in a dot lib, dot lib, whatever name, as well as whatever name, dot ldb, or whatever name you want to give it. This is a binary version. You cannot open it. And this is a text version. You can open and see these things. It's possible that somebody gave you this because they don't want you to look inside. Tool will read it and tool will understand all these properly. You can read that information within the tool. You can understand what are the values, but you cannot open it. Um, then it will be this version. But typically, I mean, I, 
I've seen both available because you even when they don't give it, you read in the tool, you can really get an idea of that. Okay, where are we? Um, so yeah, timing. So related pin again, you know these curly brackets start and here everything is is an organized way, and in a proper format or syntax way. So timing of this pin. Keep in mind that we are under these. Uh, curly bracket which ends here so mean this all information is for the output pin so when timing starts the related pin first we have information with respect to pin a let's make it a little bit smaller so that i can have this a so this gate and maybe makes sense if i bring these guys oops all that Just that. Yes. Okay, fine. Bring it here, then I can make it a little bigger. Um, so, in information of the timing output. Now, first one is uh, related pin is A. So, information because signal can travel from A to O. And so, NAND gate is like this. Please. Two N MOSFETs, A, B, and it will have two P MOSFETs in series. So just to think of that. This is supply voltage, VCC, this is ground. Okay, that makes sense. This is the output. Um, and inputs are these. So you can look at that. In this way, will help. Okay, so right now we are thinking of when a signal change here, and how much it takes from that change till this output changes. That that's what we are looking here. So if you look at timing sense is positive unit. Positive unit means if this goes high, zero to one, this output also follows zero to one. A negative unit will be if this goes from zero to one and this point goes from 1 to 0 so it's saying that again this is a sample library just as created by chat GPT and I'm just showing you as an example so related pin is a timing sensor unit positive unit now cell rise this means this output is rising going from 0 to 0 oops not like that going from 0 to 1 When it goes to zero one, that means input is also going from zero to because it's positive unit. And we're not concerned with other input points, just A. So and you can understand when what will happen to B if we go from zero to one. So anyway, what I'm what I'm saying, okay. So yes, cell rise, rise, and that's the rise transition. And this is cell, uh, so it's a delay information here and the transition time here. So this is the delay information is the time. Uh, so if I put these two, so since I have to draw these, it's just gonna, this is gonna take time. Um, output will come after a little delay, right? So this 50% time till this 50% time. You 50 mean, to reach to the 50 percent of the maximum level here vcc so it is 0.5 vcc this point okay so if you talk about against time the time it takes for the input to reach 50 and the time is these two difference of time between do is called delay and that is this table now what is showing as an interesting one now this table that i have probably doesn't ideally here it should be the same delay template that I remember I mentioned to you this delay template the whole point is it doesn't have to repeat that information so if you look at this one if I don't have any comments here right what will you know what is index one what is index two does it tell you anything no right that's where the table inf information at the top of it so but anyway I have comments here which is good to tell you that index two is um, is the load 
and index one. So what we assume, I think that's a good point. There's something you need to, so index two, let me get rid of this. So your index two, two is going like that. Um, and index one goes like that. So your output capacitance, which is this guy, is 0.1 picofarad, 0.5 picofarad, 1 picofarad, picofarad. So those are the, think of that, those are the, those are the titles in a table like this, right? So here you have capacitance, here you have, uh, what is it, slew. Tell you what is slew in a minute. Uh, point one, point five, one point zero, point zero one, zero five, point one. Okay, pretty obvious. Okay, capacitance here is. So think of that. This capacitance is connected to a wire, and that will have impact here because at uh, this point, charging and discharging really depends how much capacitance is connected to this point. If it's a huge capacitance, it will be hard, it will take longer to charge it. And will take longer to discharge. So, the, and also, um, it depends on what kind of slew is here. Do you remember slew? I, I discuss all these transition time delay things in my C mask, but just to give you, uh, one we're defining is Time it takes from 10% to 90% or 20% to 80%. So when this signal changes from this value to this value, how long it takes it to change, this is called slew, slew, or transition time at input. So these two are important factors. How much delays depends what's the input side, slew, and also depends how much cap is connected to the output. So this lookup table exactly does this. We don't know. When they created a sensor lab, they don't know how much capacitance will be connected, like what kind of wire it will. And same NAND gate on multiple places might have a different output capacitance. And depending on where they are in the signal, how much is the coming input, that can vary. So standard cell library gives us a lookup table so that tool knows what kind of cap is here, what kind of transition time is coming on the input side, and using those values, it can pick what value to get those. So in this one, it's, uh, which one I should mention, here let's pick this guy, 0 0.12, 0 0 0.14, 0 0.16, 0 0.13, 0 0.15, 0 0.17, 0 0.14, 0.16, now you must be wondering what happens if your actual value is here. Then tool does the interpolation. Like a value of capacitance comes which is not 0.1, it's bigger than 0.3. And similarly trans comes between them. Tool does interpolation. And you probably be thinking what if capacitance is beyond that? So ideally, there's another, there's a constraint at the output. Um, ideally, so tool can do extrapolation. Right, but extrapolation can be turned out to be inaccurate. You know, his tool is guessing things, so it's always good, and that's where the constraints of max constraints um, comes into the picture. It's like, what is the maximum capacitance this can drive, which is up to this one? If it comes more than that, tool will guess something. It will not stop it, but this will be inaccurate because that's not the data we give. So, so we want to during a implementation stage ensure it doesn't put too much cap, means it tries to place the two cells closer to each other and have a less capacitance in between. Or maybe it uses a, a metal which has less capacitance, something like that. And so that's why tools also take a guidance from this data add for implementation, and then we later on verify that. So that makes sense. It, it, so output delay from input to output is measured like this in a two-dimensional table which is here 
and exactly the same the other thing we want to do is once we have a delay but we need also need to determine the shape the slew of this one like it's just like that input or output now it will change again what it does it depend it depends what's the slew on the input and also what's the capacity inside the output so in exactly similar way we did delay there's a rise transition so in a way if, if it's valid you can also have a uh, self fall and fall transition which i didn't put put here i went into the other pin but it is exactly the same phenomenon uh, so yeah that hmm okay it's 15 minutes already next video will touch okay when tool sees a circuit like this how does it get the timing and how it just put things together i think that would be fun all right see you in that video bye